Welcome back to the channel's Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluders, Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud, available on Amazon. In this part we will finish the reading of the chapter for seven months, one more film and all is well. Or is it? And begin the chapter 5 MY 15 years and the butterfly effect. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Let's go. We hugged each other for a long time when he left. We'll talk later and see ourselves at school. I was sad too for several reasons, but I was hoping to find answers and I was determined to go my way without fear, whatever that meant, truth or fantasy. Chapter 5, My 15 Years and the Butterfly Effect Throughout these seven months, another striking event was my 15th birthday. It happened two and a half months after my parents' party. I had asked my parents not to do too much, but you know what parents are like, especially as a single child and, according to my father, they never gave a damn. Judged girl, always responsible and with her feet on the ground, he said. While my mother made a point of remembering that she was not as careful as I was, though also very responsible and hardworking. She had lots of boyfriends before she met my father and, according to her, she did a lot of nonsense in her teens. Of course, we're having a party, Mare. These rituals of passage for young people are important, she said over breakfast. Yeah, Mare, we can give you this gift. After all, you also work hard studying and still have your blog, which keeps growing and occupying you. Dad, this is just a fashion. Soon people will prefer video makers and photo posters, and my texts will be obsolete. Note, as I mentioned, it was the fashion of the YouTubers that was beginning to emerge, in addition to the Instagram top, with its photos and followers in the millions. Reading texts is still modest compared to the power of image, sound, and movement. Do not say that, kid. You're a lot smarter than these people who make fun videos and photos. It may be, mother, but on the internet what counts is the amount of people who see, follow, and share things. Well, honey, you're going to have a 15-year party anyway, and you can invite anyone you want. I could only think of one person who I wanted to see again on my birthday, Leandro. During those weeks we have been communicating by the internet with some frequency. He showed more and more interest in my texts and positions, while I longed to see him again. Our face-to-face -face conversation was suspended due to Marcos's presence at my parents' party, so I was curious to know where else all that charm and intelligence would go, or if it was just another fan of the blog wanting to get closer to me like the messages from the future said. Our exchanges of messages were about almost everything. He gave me tips on studying and school, since he was almost already going to college. I suggested films, series and books that he could watch slash read covering topics similar to those he had been dealing with on the blog, juvenile rebellion against the oppressor system, strong and independent female characters, fiction, and dystopian fantasies that warned the way our world was following. He claimed to admire my vast knowledge of pop culture and science, but it always seemed to me a half-forced compliment to try to please me. In the few video chats we had I could see some discomfort in him wanting to compliment my appearance while at the same time wanting to show respect for my personality, which he said was much stronger than could be expected from a 14-year-old girl. With my hormones also rising more and more, I had to hold myself so that I did not see much enthusiasm with his gaze through the computer screen. It was a deep, slow look at times, as though piercing through our souls. Maybe that's why the idea of seeing him in person again seemed quite exciting to me. Note, people from other generations may never understand how one can only know someone deeply through contacts over the internet. Invariably, these people with whom we relate via digital cloud end up making more sense in our lives than many of those who are right next to us. 
The preparations began for the party of my 15 years. In those days of August, I was under the greatest pressure at school, as matters had been accumulated since the beginning of the year, and I wanted to secure my approval as early as October. As I said before, it was the way to guarantee some free time, study a lot, spend the year, and be able to relax a bit more at the end of the year. I helped little in the preparations for the party. I made the guest list with my mother. When it came time to put Marcos on the list, she looked at me curiously. She thought we had ended the affair under bad terms. She noticed his absence in our lives and I was sad for a few days, but she hardly knew how the whole process was. There was much more in our history than a simple courtship. It's true that in the weeks after the breakup, things got uncomfortable in our daily lives. Marcos was close to me in the classroom every day, but away from my heart. On the other hand, Leandro was away from me via the internet, but getting closer in affinities and a very nice effective connection. I wonder what my life would have been like if I had not met Leandro. Would I still be with Marcos? More than once Marcos came and talked to me, dragging the conversation down this side of the what if. At first, I thought it was a crude attempt to resume, but I soon realized that there was a basis in his questioning, in the face of our unresolved mystery of dreams with messages from the future. One day, talking at the break time, we began to set up possible scenarios in the face of the situations presented to us. What if his dreams had not driven him to come looking for me? I would have continued my life without even knowing about him and maybe his challenge not to write about the oppression of the Hunger Games related to our current youth situation had never struck me, and maybe I'd never had written such a critical text that would have leveraged my blog in the heights of hits and comments. But there is the question of my own dreams and the voices I had heard sometimes, that on some level are very reminiscent of Leandro's voice, but it may well be an illusion preached by my subconscious mixed with my juvenile hormones when it comes to his voice. Would I have taken my blog down this road if it had not been Marco's presence in opposition? It was as if it were a mere step for someone else's to climb, maybe me. He finally revealed to me during the setup of these scenarios that in the two absences, he had actually felt as if his mind was being reassembled in the face of new information that was not foreseen. Like a robot getting new data? I asked jokingly. Seriously, he replied that the feeling was exactly that. How much free choice was there really in our actions if there was all this subconscious and unconscious manipulation? In this scenario, I also felt quite distressed imagining that all my independence and freedom of action could also be being manipulated. And finally, he asked, What if I had not gone to your parents' party? After all, I kind of invited myself. It was not your plan to invite me. Could it be that in this scenario you would have paid some attention to him at last? He bit off his voice when referring to Leandro again. Come on, Marcos. We are over it. I know, but remember it still bothers me. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Continuing to support the channel's Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Subscribe, like, and share the video. Bye-bye.